folks, you'd have to be living under a rock to not realize that inflation and the battle against inflation is one of the biggest things of 2022 and 2023. Uh, I said a month ago, after we got a surprise headline reading falling from 6 to 5%, that I believe the May reading on May 10th would be a soccer higher. We now know what expectations are, and I am not changing my opinion. We're going to have this discussion with Taylor from Life Goal Investments. How are you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. This is exciting. This is enemy of the state number one. It hasn't changed. Jay Powell still says it's inflation, 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 and we're going to fight it. And so these prints become so important. And I say that, and people are like, you said the same thing last month. And you're like, I did. You're right. And it <laughs> you're right. I important. did. <laughs> New data comes out. We have to reset. <laughs> Yeah, so let me set up this week, uh, or actually, you know, two days from now, Wednesday, um, and why I called this a month ago. So again, we got a shocker reduction. This is all headline, CPI headline. It went from six to five. Expectations, I believe, were like five, six. So it was a big beat to the downside. Hey, the Fed is winning, blah, 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 blah. Uh, there were two things last month that I, that I was fearful of uh, that are now tr truer than ever. One, the base effect. Right. People who know CPI, there's a 12 month and then one month rolls off. Another one comes on. We had a big one last month. We have a super tiny base effect this month. Uh, that's the first reason I was like, that's going to be hard to do. And then more importantly, commodities, oil, gas, all of these kind of had a bid mid month. Uh, they're down now, but bid mid month, which is when I think CPI is calculated. Uh, I think CPI headline is going to do what core did last month. And if you don't know what core did last month, it broke trend. So CPI headline, we've had nine months of lower numbers. I, and the, and the expectations for a flat number expectations are for five, which were last readings. I've come out and said, I think they're going to be five, two or five, three. And I don't think the market's ready for that. And no. I yeah, I, I totally agree with you that that is I mean, when the expectation says five and, and it's interesting, though, that the expectation is exactly what it was from the month before. So the market's saying, like, we really know that some things got thrown on a kilter uh, over the last month. And, and to the point we talked about oil earlier, um, but OPEC cut in the middle of last month or at the beginning of last month and caused about a half a month rally upwards in oil prices. And we saw it as a result at the gas stations. And yeah. so I tend to agree. And, and, and we agreed on this, which we haven't agreed on much when it comes to inflation. No, we haven't. <laughs> I tend to agree that it's going to come in higher than an expectation, higher than 5% this month, and largely on the backs of the fact that oil has been so darn volatile. And then next month, likely you might get shaved further off because oil has cratered since mid month, but again, we had that big run up that is indisputable and it's something that, that is going to bleed through into these inflationary numbers. Now, the, the, you know, a month ago, I said we were unlucky where the Fed meeting was because it was really pre economic data from the banking crisis. The next Fed meeting, we are really lucky. We are so lucky in the next Fed meeting because we actually get two CPI readings. Not only do we get this one, but we get the next CPI reading before the Fed meeting. Again, I expect this one to be hot. Again, 5253. Five, to your point, I expect next month, like I think it's a day, I think it's the day before the release. Um, I think we could be at 4.4 four or 4.5. Four, so I think this will be a blip, but it will break trend. And, and it's funny because what you will have experienced after our next couple inflationary prints is the fact that the banking issue has settled into the numbers at that point. Correct. So you, you have, so the banking issue hit Silicon Valley bank went under signature bank kind of on their own demises went under a little bit. And then what happened there was things were cool. They settled in and, and this was okay. We knew first Republic was an outstanding issue that could or go one way or the other. And then that fell off and things were cool again. And nothing really was a result because people knew that was coming. And then, as of last week, you had this gap downwards. And I think that people are now taking it more seriously to say, you know, what is causing these banks to come under? Well, it's the lack of capital. It's the lack of deposits. Some of that's a function of people taking money to money markets and bigger banks. But this is happening. I have a buddy who's a banker, and he said this started happening in October of last year. 
And why did it start happening in October of last year? Because inflation wore the people down and they started to draw down their savings in October of last year, people and businesses for that matter. And at the same time, a lot of these businesses faced lower demand for their goods. So their profits weren't as high on the other end. And so this is something that's been playing out beneath the surface that we weren't aware of for the better part of, you know, six, eight months, whatever it is. And now it's really come to light. And I think that people and spenders as consumers are looking at this and going, I'm going to tighten my belt. Yeah. Again, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm on record saying, I think a recession started Q2, right. Because of the banking crisis. Um, yeah. And, and the other thing about CPI, again, I think generally speaking, we're beating inflation. I just think this month, is going to shock people because not only will the following month, like I just said, be in the you know mid to high fours, I think post, what will that be? Post June meeting, we're actually going to start to see housing inflation roll off, right? right? Housing's going to get better in the, I think it's the July it's incredibly, period. Incredibly, incredibly sticky. That's been the most, oh, the, the biggest was, thing. Uh, last month was the record. It was 8.9%, yeah. the highest of trend. Yeah. So you know, what, it, so yeah. what, I think I know what you're going to say here, but I'm not going to put words in your mouth. What does the Fed do? Well, again, I think they're really lucky that they get that second reading before their meeting. What's interesting, so I looked at it, um, it was it was last week now that I looked at it, so it may have changed since then, but it was 80% no hike, yeah. just, just flat, 10% yeah. hike, 10% cut. It's like, <laughs> boy, I mean- this is a confused market at this point. And that's what's so interesting and so important about these inflationary prints is that they're going to dictate what direction that goes. And the market right now is incredibly confused. The Fed's saying we might have to continue to go higher, maybe. Not as likely as what their language said the month before. But the Fed, on the other side, the market's saying you're going to cut three times. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So the June meeting, they will pause 100%. 100%. I will go as far as saying I expect them to pause all year. I don't see a cut all year. And yes, I see the market. You and I have had this battle all year. The market's been screaming this. I get people saying, look at the two year. Look at this. Look at that. I'm like, you guys are looking at a day. This is not coming. The market resets. And at least at least till today, I've been a lot more right than the market has. Yeah. And I, so I don't I see a cut coming. I took the opposite side of it. I said they will cut before the end of the year, but by no stretch, in my opinion, I mean, Jay Powell has been so clear on what he's saying. At, by no no stretch could I, I don't understand how the market can think that 75 basis points were three cut. cuts come on yeah yeah <laughs> I mean that that's gonna take a really bad meltdown in the economy because again he has to save face too and say like yeah. listen inflation is the issue we're gonna control inflation and then we'll cut the market has more than a 50 50 probability that they start cutting in September I saw that I saw that well let's let's put it out here let's let's play or steel man it right and Again, I am more, I guess, negative than you that no cuts are coming or however we say that. Right, right, yeah. um, in order to get a September cut, which is like three meetings away, unemployment's got to go from 3.4 3 to like 4.8 or 5%. It's got to fall off a cliff. Or you need to have the banks implode. That would be that would be the other thing like that, that banks. drive it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, like 20, 30, 40 banks yeah. implode. And then they go, okay, we need to take our foot off the throat because that's exactly where now it is right now. it's systemic. It's not little operator here and your bad balance sheet there. And Correct. And, and, and more realistically, they come in to, to our point on the last video and start making moves from Congress and, and shoring things up with different regulatory and, and different rules where, you know, yeah. businesses may have a higher FDIC limit, whatever exactly. it is. Exactly. I don't think, again, I think what Powell is telling us is treasury do your effing job fdic do your effing job yes i'm a firefighter with you for some of these things but stop the fed put one of the things that i was disgusted by in the last video is i think wall street was trying to call jerome powell's bluff by shorting regional banks i think wall street was sitting around in their power rooms you know smoking cigars going all right which how many banks are we going to take out and Jerome Powell's going to pivot. Yikes. I bet we could take out 10 of them. And then Jerome Powell will pivot. He's going, fuck you. I'm not pivoting. That's right. what I think's going on. That's that's an interesting take. I, I had not thought of that myself. But to your point, obviously, if you're a capitalist and you want stocks to go higher, the easiest way to do that is to get Jerome Powell off your back 
who's just exactly. scratching at you with higher rates. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. That's so that's I think I think I think I think Wall Street, I and again, I think they're testing them. I think past Fed presidents have folded like cheap suits. I think Jerome Powell is saying, I am being remarkably clear. You can test me. And what he said at the meeting is I think he basically said that's Treasury's job. That's Treasury's job. That's FDIC's job. Correct. My job Correct. is inflation. Yep. Right. And I basically and have one tool. I have two tools. So the other thing that's happened in the background here that that is not spoken about anywhere, which is because it's a little bit more of a complex system, is they're letting their balance sheet roll off. Yeah, QT. So they're yep. purging bonds into the market every single month, not reinvesting them like they were before. So they got both of their spigots yeah. full throttle on right now. Not changing. And, uh, yeah, the one is just more effective immediately, and that is the, the Fed rates. And it, 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 what's interesting was when he got asked about the economy, he said, actually, there's two diverting thought processes between myself and the yeah. staff, and which yeah. is interesting. He said, I love I that. Most likely is that we avoid a recession. Yeah. And the staff thinks it's most likely that we enter a modest recession, which was yeah. very interesting. And again, with that, what, again, what he was saying there, in my opinion, is my staff led me down the transitory path. They're a bunch of morons and idiots. I'm going to stick to my guns this time. And I think we're going to get the soft landing or at least not a recession this year. I think Jerome Powell is being remarkably strong. It is about to get hard because Wall Street, pres uh, the politicians, billionaires are going to come at him hard. If he went Hard. this, if he raised this upcoming meeting, boy, that that would be a sucker punch to the market. The market really is confident that that is not going to happen. And this inflationary print, to your point, will be interesting to see because if it comes in hot like we both expect, I'm not saying that he goes. I think it's incredibly unlikely that he does yeah, go and raise he rates. Go. But if he does, this would be a punch right in the face. And people would go, oh, my gosh, this is Paul Volcker. Well, let's let's play it out. Let's just play devil's advocate. A buddy of mine who I talked to on Sunday actually thinks it could be as bad as 5-5. Five, five. I don't think we're there, but let's just pretend it's that for a minute. We come in, headlines up at 5-5. Five, five. And it, it comes out before the market opens. I can't imagine the market is happy with a 5-5 five, five CPI headline. Oh, absolutely not. I mean, that is... This is this is the string of hope we're, we're we're dangling from right now. We're dangling from the string of hope. Like we said, we've talked about earnings, we talked about commodities, all we talked about bonds, we've talked about gold. All of these things are saying recession. The one thing the market's hanging on, or maybe two things, are AI powder dust, you know, fairy dust that's being sprinkled in. But the other thing is the Fed put and the Fed the Fed pivoting. And if this takes that off. And, and it goes from all of a sudden they're expecting 75 basis points, three rate cuts to only, you know, expecting one. They're not going to race all three, I wouldn't think. But um, but that that would be really meaningful change. Yeah, I think the I think the market, I think I think net reaction is very negative Wednesday if it goes out. I'm not calling for it, but I'm just I'm trying to play what if with you. A five five reading would would cause Wall Street to reevaluate, I think. Yeah, yeah. If it comes in close, there's no reevaluation that's going to take place. But if it Agreed. comes in a half a point high like that, Wall Street's going to go, uh oh, this is tougher uh -oh. than what Maybe we expected. Maybe Jerome's right. <laughs> Inflation is stickier than what we expected. Yeah. Well, this is going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a Wednesday is a big day. You want to just take a wild ass guess what you think CPI headline will be? You want to pick a number or you want to play over under? Which would you prefer? Let's do over under. Uh, I'll say 5 2. 5 2. That's a good line. Um, <laughs> that's a good line. So it came in at five. Yeah. I I guess I'll take. I, I think it's high. I, I'm, I'll, I'll take the over. I don't think it's much over, but I think it's over. Yeah, yeah. That's where I'm at too. I think it's up. I think it's. I think it's five two or higher. I really do, which it, will be very interesting. The the most recent inflation prints have not been pretty. <laughs> Let's call it oh. a spade a spade on that front. So that's. Yeah. I mean, directionally, that's where things are are indicating they're going to go. But the market obviously says five. So we'll see. Yeah. Well, the next video we're going to get to is we're going to talk about rate cuts because I think it's wild what the market is expecting. Taylor, where can people find you? Yeah, follow us at Life Goal Investments. We're on both Instagram and a TikTok. Again, it's Life Goal Investments. Thank you, buddy.